Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today I'm going to show you a trick to tame the full auto recoil of many high rate of fire guns in Escape from Tarkov. It's no secret that plenty of weapons suck on full auto after the 1212 nerfs, so after nearly a year of this updated model, weapons like the M4 are still widely avoided due to their over exaggerated recoil. The reason for this is mainly their fire rate. Weapons like the UMP are really good, as are the RD704, the Mutant, the SCAR, and the MDR. Although some of this is to do with the weapon's innate handling characteristics, high fire rate is the prime culprit, especially for the initial kick. You will notice that many of these good weapons are all in the 600 to 650 recoil range, and this is not a coincidence. Once we get to around 800 RPM, the frequency of rounds fired overwhelms the recoil compensation of RPMC for a number of shots before finally getting back under control. This doesn't happen at 600 RPM to anywhere near the same extent. Now there is one way to help alleviate this situation, which is to do what I'm going to call here a tap auto, where we basically tap fire once and then hold down left click for the real full auto fire. What this does is it starts the compensation process early, so when you begin the full auto, the compensation from shot 1 has started to take effect already, which helps to alleviate the serious issues at the top of the peak of the spray pattern. Analyzing the top of the peaks with an M4, for example, shows the difference between the tap fire and the regular full auto, and how it can make a massive difference to the overall controllability of the weapon in this mode. There is a little bit of a knack to it, as if you tap too quickly, then you won't help the recoil profile much. I would describe it as like a small deliberate pause after the first shot, as opposed to tapping once and then going full auto as soon as you physically can, as it won't work as well that way. Importantly, we only need to reduce the initial recoil on the first few rounds to make this manageable again. This is similar to the 7N40 or Subsonic SX technique for 545 weapons and the MP7, where you add a few recoil reducing rounds into the top of a magazine to lower that initial spray, which I've talked about in a previous video. One interesting side effect of this is that it makes optics like the TAC-30, which, while cheap and liked by many players, are notorious for their difficulty of use with the full auto mode on these high RPM weapons. This is because the way they are set up in Tarkov means that you lose sight picture due to the weapon flying upwards, obscuring your line of sight down the scope itself. Many optics are like this, which is one reason why the Voodoos and the Razors of this world are favoured over those such as the TAC-30, because they don't do this really, but using TAP Auto we can avoid most of the negative effects of the full auto spray on those scopes that are affected. While it's not the perfect solution, it does help to alleviate the issue. So this is all well and good, but how do we use this to remove the rest of the recoil? Now is a good time to refresh our memory of the vertical recoil compensation that we have to do as the player, because it does take a bit of practice, especially if we're changing our muscle memory a bit and by altering our full auto technique. Regular vertical recoil in Tarkov, as we have seen, takes our point of aim upwards, where it maxes out at some point before settling back into an intermediary position. Our job to control this recoil is to reverse this pattern, by moving the mouse down a bit and then back up again about half of the initial distance, once the PMC's compensation settles in. Exactly how you have to move it changes from weapon to weapon and different levels of vertical recoil, but the basic principle is the same for all guns in this game on full auto. With our tap auto technique we still do need to control the recoil pattern, as ultimately we'll end up in the same place with the full auto recoil controlled by our PMC instead of us, but our initial instincts to pull down a bunch needs to be unlearned a little bit to fully take advantage of this mechanic. However, the one advantage of this is that it is easier than controlling the recoil before. Technically speaking, outside of optics that block your sight, weapons like the M4 that jump a lot at the beginning can be controlled vertically, it's just much harder than it used to be before the changes were made, which of course we don't really want as the player. Interestingly, this is where the distinction between horizontal and vertical recoil comes in, as arguably we can control vertical recoil and the pattern is broadly the same each time, whereas horizontal recoil is random from side to side, which makes it much more difficult if not impossible to control properly. This is why a weapon like the RD704, outside of its fire rate and the time to kill implications of that specifically, can be thought of as superior to the mutant. Although its vertical recoil is nowhere near as good, the horizontal recoil is better, so at high levels of gameplay, you should take the RD. In turn, this would make the mutant more attractive to those getting used to meta gear, as it's less punishing on the player from a vertical recoil perspective, with the minor disadvantage of a bit more horizontal. Note, this is due to the differences in handling between the two weapons. In this instance, the mutant has a higher RPM than the RD, but is easier to control vertically on full auto. As long-time players of the game are very aware, this is one of the reasons why you cannot compare the vertical recoil number between different weapons in Tarkov, as they relate to each gun in a unique way, and don't tell you the whole story. 
Before we go, we'll check out my favourite way to use the M4 this wipe, drum bag, point fire only, for getting Isabrello to under 50% durability on factory. Ends up being quite heavy. <laughs> Are we taking this to factory? Yeah. We'll try the mini, it's only four more recoil, it's alright. We ain't insuring anything. Insuring nothing. Insuring nothing. I want to see if we can bait him with the uh, thing. Did it, boys. It's time to go. Do, 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 do. Did you not check save? I, I honestly don't care. This is this is a quest run. This isn't like a anything else run. I checked the save to try and like bait the dude. Other than that, like I'm just not even bothered. It's like I'm not I'm not grabbing the dog tags except for that one guy because he was like right there. Everything else is secondary to this. Quite useful that that last guy had flechette actually. There we go. That's how I do this every wipe. It is pretty tough. Next, go and check out my video on whether it's worth using M62 over M80 for 762 NATO weapons. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.